let's start, let's, t let's talk about the engine. Like, can you? It's the know, only thing I can talk about. Will it? <laughs> The long story, the long story, it didn't happen from one day to the other, it was a process, you know. This all started in January 2002, uh, sitting together in a bar in Ingolstadt, having had some beers with the ACO guys, or two of them, and we spoke, as we, what we do regularly, about this and this and that, and somehow, we don't know how, we spoke about that after that, but we don't remember, we came to Diesel. A diesel in motorsport, and why this doesn't play any role, and whether it would be a good idea to use diesel in Le Mans. And after the evening, we came to the conclusion we should think about that seriously. And that's how it started in 2002. Then the rules were developed during the next two years, and in 2004, by yes, 2004, by January, again, the first diesel rules were applied. Already on the, on the way to develop the diesel, which was not clear from the beginning because I was not really in favor of a diesel in Le Mans. But it happens a little bit like in the, in the with Saulus and Paulus, you know, got struck by a lightning and then he changed from fighting against Christians to become a Christian, and so I became a little bit more a diesel guy. And that's where we are now. You know, it was in a way it was a logic step to say when we started doing the diesel the first time, we didn't know what would expect us. So we 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 made the security strategy. We used as much cylinders as we could and the biggest volume, which we did also with the R15. We kept it because there is no better thing than to have maximum volume. And uh, but. After the experience we made in 2006, 7 and 8, we already saw that there is a, a stronger politic against the business, which reduced the possibility more and more. And that's why the step to a 10 cylinder was more logic as it was clear that power would not increase, but would maximum stay or would be reduced by the ACO, by the rules. And this was happening. So it was logic to spread the, the load on less cylinder than 12 and to have the benefit of less friction losses. To compensate a little bit the power loss by the restrictions. Means smaller air restrictor, lower boost. So there are many things that have been changed by the, from the R10 to the R15 because you have to know that the R10 with the diesel was a bad compromise in the sense that the chassis and the monocoque was the concept was made for a V8, not a diesel but for a V8 gasoline engine. And then we swapped to the diesel, but we kept the chassis. And that's why the engine was too much in the rear and the car was too long. Because the engine became very long. This is also one of the reasons why we had only a five speed gearbox, just to keep the length short enough, or even not longer. So, and uh, when we moved to the R15, we made this all right, or what we believed this is. We moved the engine more forward, about 200 millimeters, and we made it shorter. So the complete weight center of the uh, center of gravity went more, more to the driver to make the car more agile, but on the other hand, more difficult to set up. As long as it's not shouting for more power, everything is fine. And as long as there is no trouble with the engine, it's fine as well. And for the rest, I don't care. That's not my business. There is always room. There is always room. The question is only, what do you want? Uh, if you look, if you look on, uh, for Peugeot this year, it's a typical example that you can have too much power. It makes the car quick for sure, but it kills the engine at the end of the day. And you have to arrive at the end of a race when you want to win it. So you have to find the right balance between drivability, reliability, fuel consumption, and power delivery. So these things combined 
make a car drive. It's not only the speed alone, it's also how you generate the speed and how much the driver has to work for it or how much the engine is giving it easily to him. If you have a very pointy engine, you, so if, if you have a very pointy engine, it's more a, a mess for a driver to handle that. Except of a very smooth, with a wide top band, so it makes life for him very easy. Just go for throttle and that's it. Depends uh, what, what solution we are looking for for next year. I won't tell you now. <coughs> but of course we have to look out what's going on with the hybrid. Yeah. <coughs> you know, it's not such an easy thing to answer because making a hybrid in a car like that implicates always a lot more complexity in the car, some weight some handling problems and 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 you have to look out very very carefully that you don't end up with having a slower car than before you know hybrid is a very ambiguous thing especially in Le Mans where you have the long straights and only six or seven corners where you really break very hard and that's it and, uh, we will see if by next year I think in Le Mans whether the hybrid thing is really uh, a move forward or not. That's, that's what we asked the ACO to do three years ago. So looking to where the production cars are going at, the downsized engine, we did a similar step in the in Le Mans series. And that's why the rules are made, how they are made now. So for a turbocharged gasoline, we have a 2 liter. Normally aspirate 3.4 means more or less the old uh, LMP2 category and for diesel restrictions 3.7. So they are widely downsized. Okay, it's, you can say a 3.7 diesel is not really downsized as a 3.4 normally aspirated. But the comparison was a 6 liter normally aspirated gasoline engine and a 5.5 liter diesel is quite much bigger to, to make it. And I think uh, from 2014 on, where we are already discussing about the new rules now with the ACO, there's a complete new concept behind. So they don't want to make any limits on the engine, they just make a limit on the fuel. The allowance of fuel you have for 24 hours is then dictating the type and the size of engine you want to do. So they would limit the amount of fuel you can use? That's that the basic course? idea. We want, they want to come down to a real efficiency formula where just the amount of energy is limited you are able to use for the 24 hours and how you do it. So you, up you, to you. You could have like, like forget, pretend the Peugeots didn't break this year. And you could have them rounding at those insane speeds, but if they ran out of fuel or energy... Then you're done. They don't get anything so on extra. the last lap, fuel goes, you're exactly. done. Exactly. This could happen. 